The theme of this year's Design Week is Design the World You Want. It's an exciting opportunity to hit the pause button, to ponder what if, and to imagine a new way of doing things. But sometimes, reaching back into the archives of history can reveal lessons which have been taught before, by pioneers in their field who chose to walk a different path, to challenge the established way of doing things. This is the story of an architect who chose to design the world he wanted, in a time suddenly not so very different from ours, even though it was almost 100 years ago. Hi, my name is Virginia Blue, and if you'll lend me your imagination for a few moments, I'll take you on a journey back in time to the early 20th century to introduce you to an architect whose story has largely faded from architectural history. But his ideas, while contentious at the time, feel incredibly relevant to our current ethos. He embraced small footprint living, shared community spaces, recycled materials as part of the building fabric, and an appreciation of the emotional power of beauty in architecture. Howard Lawson practiced as an architect during the tumultuous early decades of the 20th century. It was a time ravaged by two world wars and the Great Depression. He's probably most famous for his Beverly Hills Flats development and for the very colourful multi-storey flats developments along Alexandra Avenue surrounding Beverly Hills in South Yarra. All of these buildings were built between the wars. But as I discovered during my extensive research into his life and architecture for my master's thesis, he was also responsible for designing more than 200 other buildings. These included lots of other flat developments across Melbourne, but also theatres, particularly cinemas, which were quite new then, as well as leisure complexes, even a chocolate factory, and as well as that, a lot of residential buildings. There were villas, bungalows, duplexes. Lawson regularly conversed with planning ministers, judges, politicians, and captains of industry about his ideas for town planning and bettering the lives of residents of Melbourne through better architecture and better planning. He wrote extensive opinion pieces in local and state papers and was called to appear as an expert witness in no less than three royal commissions looking into such matters. Lawson argued publicly for the need to remove slums and to provide better housing for what he termed the artisan class, with access to gardens and fresh air. He had an interest in garden cities and was committed to the importance of light and ventilation in creating healthier buildings. Clever design in both architecture and town planning, he argued, 
would lead to better cities with happier people. He was also a master of conversions very early on. In 1912, he converted the Hoadley Jam Factory into both flats and also a picture theatre. Both of these were very unusual at the time. He converted hotels into cinemas and he converted single dwellings into multi-residential flats dwellings. Something which is of particular interest to our needs for increased dwelling spaces now. But what is less known about him are his arts and crafts philosophies. These were philosophies that stayed with his architecture from his very earliest days studying architecture under Robert Haddon in 1902, right through to the very final buildings which he built, which were the Brockley Road flats in South Yarra. Lawson's interest in arts and crafts began early on with his Garden City tours of England and Europe before the Great War. But he also increasingly drew on the Californian craftsman philosophies in his architectural approach. Always a dichotomy, Lawson's other passion was efficiency in building. And at first glance, this seems incongruous with the William Morris version of arts and crafts being about individual handmade items. But Lawson possessed both a very logical and a very creative mind, allowing him to combine his two passions into his architecture. His interest in building efficiency was so well known that he was invited to give evidence at a Royal Commission into Housing in 1916, which was set up to find solutions to the shortage of men and materials during the Great War. Lawson explained to the parliamentarians that he had devised a system of employing specialised tradesmen to build his houses. One carpenter would specialise in door hanging, another would specialise in skirtings and so on. This was a novel approach at the time and reminiscent of the Henry Ford production system. At Beverly Hills, which was the culmination of his architectural philosophies and ambitions for creating an arts and crafts style community housing estate, he was able to combine this seemingly paradoxical approach by utilising repeated cast concrete elements alongside artisan made items. Unlike his contemporaries, it meant that the integral elements of arts and crafts were available to more people than just the very wealthy. It was a Lawsonian interpretation of arts and crafts. The principle that is perhaps the strongest to him is this connection with landscape. And it is this that gives us a new way of looking at Lawson's architecture. From the outset, Lawson was a very keen proponent of the connection between indoor and outdoor spaces. Even his earliest villas and flats had sleepouts, balconies and terraces, all designed to allow views and ventilation. And Beverly Hills has a generous amount of these spaces. This connection with landscape was an inherent component of the California craftsman outdoorsy aesthetic, which would have naturally appealed to Lawson with his well-publicised opinions on gardens and ventilation. In Melbourne's mild but unpredictable climate, this approach meant that access to fresh air and views of the landscape, the living rooms and bedrooms, were every bit as important, perhaps more so, than actually being in the outdoor space. It's a different way of thinking to our current rationale, but it goes towards an understanding of why the balconies at Beverly Hills seem small to contemporary eyes. They were not intended to house barbecues and full dining settings, but were more about creating depth to the internal living spaces, of creating a connection with the landscape, which is very much an arts and crafts, and particularly craftsman, philosophy. Beverly Hills is dotted with built-in planter boxes. They appear in stairwells, in light wells, and form window boxes on the facades, and even on the swimming pool window. Plants are tucked around and about in these many locations, which reinforce the connection with landscape albeit a constructed one. The connection with gardens creates a layered botanical mood at Beverly Hills. When I first started researching Howard Lawson's architecture, the element that I found most curious was his use of recycled building fabrics. Now this was very unusual at the time. It's something which we really celebrate now and think is clever. But in the 1920s and the 1930s, it was not something that was usual. And if it was done, it wasn't celebrated. Lawson used recycled elements in two ways. 
One was as part of the building fabric. And secondly, it was as a celebration of items of beauty. And it's in this latter point in particular that it was most unusual use of these recycled materials. We know that he was using recycled materials as early as 1926, when he reused some of the former Joy Art building in his new Palace Theatre at Geelong. He reused some of the roof principal members and some of the columns in these buildings, which were written about in the local paper. During this time, recycled materials were used sparingly, but they were not celebrated. What makes Lawson's architecture so very different is his use of these recycled elements front and centre in his design. He used them as treasure points almost, as, as spotlights. One of the really interesting elements of Beverly Hills is its use of shared spaces, which was quite unusual at the time. Other flat developments did have some shared community spaces, but it's the way that Lawson incorporated them, the type that they are, and the way that they form part of the theatre of the space, which makes them particularly interesting to us, especially if we see it again through this arts and crafts philosophy. The shared community spaces of Beverly Hills included the swimming pool, very famous for its viewing window, but also a small cafe and shop, and as well as that, these senses of terraces, of the staircase belonging to everybody. The sense that you journey up this staircase and you make choices. You're going to go left to one building, you're going to go right to another building, you're going to go further right to the swimming pool, or you will gather on the terrace. So back to the community spaces. So the idea was that this staircase belonged to everybody, but it became a part of theatre and it was where the community would interact with each other. So as you walk through the space, you're forced to stop at certain places. There are landings where decisions occur. It's designed to make you linger. The way that windows are orientated throughout the space, residents can talk to each other. It's a sense of connection as the world goes by. It's a sense that when they are within their own little space, there's also this wonderful connection between them. In some of my interviews, one of the residents mentioned to me that there was a sense that you could live within your own flat and feel that you were in your own life. Very happily, you had this sense of a retreat. But if you wanted to, you also had this sense of part of a community. It's hard to achieve that through architecture. It's a lot harder to do than it is to say. But a sense that you could come well within your flat, you still have these views out, these connections to the landscape, but you're back within your flat, it is your own space. want that connection, you have it there with the other residents. So it's a sense of individual spaces within a community. 
This was partly achieved because of the orientation of the buildings. They weren't directly facing each other, they were twisted and turned. And the reason they were twisted and turned is as much to do with the topography as it is to do with Lawson's belief in the connection with landscape. When you first look at the buildings from the streetscape, it appears as if they are placed randomly. As you walk up through the steps and reach the final levels on the roof terraces, it becomes immediately apparent that they were placed to interact with the connection with the Yarra River. We know from Lawson's earlier writings in both 1912, when he did the Pogley Jam development into flats, one of his earliest flat developments, and also from his writings in 1919, that this sense of the river being a place of beauty, something beautiful to look onto, was very close to his heart. It's not hard to understand then that Beverly Hills has been placed the way it has to create this connection to the river, a sense of belonging in its place and enjoying the beauty of the river. But there's more than that in terms of the community spaces too. The top of the buildings, the rooftops, were community spaces. They were originally intended to be areas for both the residents to gather and also as a drying space for the adjacent laundry. The shared community spaces at Beverly Hills are particularly interesting to us today as we look for ways to increase density of living, but in a way that doesn't destroy this fantastic connection with nature, a sense of the individual being, and also this wonderful sense of community. So the way that Lawson used these community spaces in Beverly Hills is really fascinating because they were used almost as part of the theatre of the whole placement of the elements within the space. Perhaps the most famous community space at Beverly Hills is the swimming pool. It's an absolute delight and is beautiful from whichever angle that it is viewed from. It's very famous for its viewing window, which is visible as one moves up the stairs and it means that you can see the swimmers swimming along and the swimmers have that sense of light coming up through side of the pool. This was very unusual technology for 1935 and was a wonderful way of Lawson exploring this idea of on the edge technology, on the edge engineering, something which he was always very keen on, combined with these older elements. There were actually two windows in fact. One of them has been filled in, but one is still there and is very much visible and forms part of this extraordinary insight into the way that you can make community spaces a little bit playful, just bringing everyday pleasure and fun into the lives of the residents. So other elements of the community spaces that are interesting 
at Beverly Hills are the terraces, which occur in a couple of places. There's a very large terrace that's almost designed as a sense of a stage. It had originally a fountain on it. All that is left now is the bird and the fountain, but originally there was a big pond around it. And it was a large enough gathering space for residents to gather there if they wished. It was also a place of beauty to look onto from the various window spaces. Other spaces were the gardens themselves, which have different pockets throughout the spaces and have different atmospheres. And as well as that, there was a small cafe which stocked small supplies, a can of soup perhaps, a pint of milk. So residents were encouraged to use these spaces to, as a small lingering space to gather. Should they wish for more supplies, there was another shop that was located in the laneway behind Beverly Hills, and which was open to the residents of the other flat developments which Lawson had designed and built nearby. The idea of this cafe at the front though was particularly interesting because it wasn't just a utilitarian space. It wasn't just a place to go and grab a meal or a sandwich. It was a place of beauty. In Lawson's style, it was a celebration of beauty. The extraordinary window which occurred in this space is thought to have come from three or more of the demolished mansions of the surrounding area. The lead light and stained glass window is a piece of absolute beauty, both from inside and outside the space. In later decades, this space, this cafe, got converted into an apartment and it is still used as an apartment today and is a much loved part of Beverly Hills. The sense of the, the placement of the buildings at Beverly Hills, the idea of the staircases and the way they move up through that space, they stop for a sense of theatre along the way. This is also part of the sense of the journey, but it's part of the sense of community too. One is forced to move slowly through the space. In the process of moving up through that space, one becomes part of the community. Residents can talk from windows to the people moving up through the staircase. One has to linger and move through these spaces as one gets to one's own apartment. It's a sense of everybody having to share this one central staircase with secret little staircases that lead off it. It's interesting that Lawson chose not to have multi-level stairs, nor did he choose to introduce lifts, both of which were around, the technology was there, he could have done that if he had wished. He chose, it seems, to use the stairs almost as part of this sense of community, of this sense of theatre, of this sense of interaction with landscape. With Lawson, everything always comes back to this connection with nature, of creating elements of beauty, snapshots, little treasures within a wider vista, and always, always this arts and crafts philosophy that you are happier if you have that connection with nature, be it physical, through open windows and fresh air coming through the space and cross ventilation, or be it more of a visual element, that you are looking onto these beautiful elements, you are looking onto the river, you are looking onto gardens, you are part of that landscape. It was very inherent in all of his works, from his very first villas 
to his very last development. Lawson's cinematic imagination allowed him to design the world he wanted. His entrepreneurial drive allowed him to build it too. Beginning with designing villas in an arts and crafts style in the 1910s, as his career progressed, he followed through with increasingly ambitious ideas of designing entire communities along arts and crafts philosophies. Centred around gardens, filled with architectural twists of light and shade, and an emphasis on the pleasure of leisure culminating in the Beverly Hills Flats in the mid-1930s. Lawson embraced small footprint living, shared community spaces, and recycled materials as part of the building fabric, all elements which are topical now, but were contentious at the time. He used light wells, balconies, and terraces deep within Beverly Hills to achieve good ventilation, dramatic mood, and a connection with the landscape. But most of all, Lawson applied the emotional power of beauty in his architecture and imbued his buildings with a passion and soul that is still very much appreciated by those who live in his buildings today.